Well, hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Look at that. Brenda Coles, Victor Pate, and Miss B. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Oh, I'm loving it. Hey, everybody. If this is your first time joining me, this is Miss B, positively Miss B, coming to you on my fifth year anniversary, very first episode to celebrate Storm Talk 365 Radio with Brenda Coles on the Leader's Voice with her special guest, Victor Page. You can find us at www.stormtalk365radio.com, where we help you talk to the storms in your life. But this is the Leader's Voice today. She comes on every first Sunday of the month at 1 p.m. East Coast time with different topics and different guests. And today we're gonna to talk about a lot of things, but more importantly, we're gonna talk about the importance of the black vote. And not only that, the importance to vote period. So welcome Brenda and Victor again. Hey, thank you for Victor. having me. So glad to be to be here. Happy anniversary. Happy oh, anniversary. So. Oh, loving this. So Brenda, in case this is the first time they're joining me, this is my anniversary episode. Tell them a little bit about yourself and Nan, which you're the Richmond, Virginia chapter president of. Well, thank you, Ms. B. First of all, I just want to say um, happy fifth year anniversary and for everything that you do. Um, you know, giving us a, giving the Richmond, Virginia chapter uh, a global, not just a community or a national, but a global platform. I can't tell you how appreciative we are. I can't tell you how much people need to understand and realize that we don't get uh, these platforms. And so I can't, I'm just so appreciative. And I know that our members and even the national uh, appreciates that the Richmond, Virginia chapter, National Action Network have a such a beautiful platform to be able to talk about what it is that we do. But as you say, I am the president for the Richmond, Virginia chapter of the National Action Network. And um, and because we are a civil rights organization, nonprofit, uh, our founder and our national president is Reverend Al Sharpton. Um, we, um, we deal with um, all types of cases and um, you know, whether it's civil rights, housing, um, and it can come um, from death, uh, anything that um, that is concerned or considered to be a crisis. Now, I want to say this: we do have a lot of cases where you know we do we our goal is basically is to inform people, get them engaged, and to help them to advocate for themselves. Um, you know, we have have a extremely busy year. And um, especially with uh, many brothers and sisters that uh, are behind the balls, uh, behind the walls, um, and incarcerated individuals that um, are struggling with COVID-19. And Brother Pate can, he certainly, um, I, I, it's just been a grateful working with Brother Pate out of New York. Uh, and um, as my colleague and uh, working with our brothers and sisters behind the wall. But, um, but again, you know, we work on all different types of cases, not just that, but we got death cases. Um, we have been successful with working with uh, attorney Kush Shukala, which I'm gonna let him tell you the talk about on, on his show, the success that we've had with um, the Israel Jackson, uh, Israel Monte Jackson case uh, with attorney general Mark Heron. This is why we need to be talking about voting today and the importance of it. But um, I, you know, I can go on and on but I'm gonna turn it over back to you. And so brother Victor Pate, so we can talk about uh, what it is that we do together as a chapter, as chapter, uh, with, or as the um, National Action Network and as a whole. Absolutely, I love that. You're absolutely right. It is my honor uh, to be able to give you not just a video on Facebook or in, anywhere else, but uh, I'm a global podcast network. We're on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Alexa. We're everywhere. And the downloads mm -hmm. are infinite. And your voices are heard uh, on demand. And they can download them to other platforms. So you just don't know how far you go as far as a podcast is concerned. But that being said, Victor Pate has never been on the show. But this is his time to introduce himself to our listeners and our viewers. So, Victor, if you would take this time to briefly introduce yourself and talk about your association with NAN. So thank you very much. And once again, I'm honored. And once again, congratulations on your anniversary and for your continued platform and giving voice and substance to various and diverse subject matters. Although this is my first 
my first time being on. I've watched your show a number of times, and I congratulate you and wish you many, 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 many more years of success. Um, with that said, so my name is Victor Pate. I'm a New York statewide organizer for the Halt Solitary Confinement Campaign here in New York. And it is an advocacy legislative reform organization that we are now advocating for the passage of a bill that will end anyone being placed in long-term solitary confinement in New York in our prisons and jails. And this is like only the beginning of the work that we're really trying to do. Of course, we eventually want to um, have abolition, but we'll start with taking the reduction of the amount of people that can be held in, in solitary confinement. So that's what I do as a paid uh, employee, uh, uh, person uh, in New York City. I am the founder and chairperson at the New York City chapter National Action Network Second Chance Committee which is committee myself and another formerly incarcerated person in 2009 uh, proposed to Reverend Sharpton and the National Action Network that we be allowed to, um, I guess you can start a committee that would address the needs of the people that are not only in our prisons and jails, but also for those that are returning citizens back to our community. Um, and also to deal with legislative and criminal justice reform as well as advocacy work to reform our criminal justice system. So um, on an average, like I say, um, Sister Brenda and I, which I'm so honored and proud to meet, you know, she's just a phenomenal person. I don't know. I just can't say enough about her and what she's done and her accomplishments and everything that she's do. She, she, she's just wonderful. So her and I, I don't know, I think it's maybe we've been probably been working together maybe a little bit over six months now. And I guess I kind of got to her by chance because the work that I do at the National Action Network as part of my crisis work is that I assist not only people that are inside, but I also assist the families of those that are inside that may be faced with a crisis, whether it be legal representation or whether it be the treatment of their loved ones that are behind these walls and oftentimes unheard and unseen. And a lot of times they don't, I guess, have uh, inkling of which way to turn, who they need to call, who can help them out whenever they have a problem with their loved ones. Um, and oftentimes it gets kind of, you know, I guess daunting for them. And it also creates a lot of stress for them. So they reach out to me through various mediums and various networks at the National Action Network. I guess I'm... One second, let me just put my earbuds in. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I, I should have seen that. I was kind of late. I apologize. Can I, is it better now? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sorry. So um, they usually reach out to me and usually any cases that deal with criminal justice, whether it's inside or outside, they usually pass it through to me. Well, Sister Brenda and I happened to come across each other because there was a case that was um, pending out there in Virginia. I don't have a clue of what Virginia laws are, nor did I have a resource or a network or have any real contact with anybody there. And I just went through the National Action Network chapter and I made a phone call. I got to Brenda. Uh, Brenda and I talked and I think it was love at first speak. And ever since then, we've been partners and collaborators in mostly everything that we do, whether it's in New York or whether it's out of New York. And we also came up to expand our effect and our reach and also, I guess, um, improve our resources and to support one another in what we do in both of our locations. We put together what we now call CJC, which stands for the Criminal Justice Collaborative. And that CJC is made up of five other National Action Network chapters around the state. And we have kind of sort of like come together as a collaborative. We work on crisis cases. We work on criminal justice matters. We work on legal matters. And we kind of sort of like created this relationship between ourselves and our other sister chapters, whereby we can support and expand on the work that not only we do individually, but the work that we do collective. And we kind of sort of like work as a group, as a team. And I can tell you, Sister Brenda is just like, you know, 
as far as I'm concerned, and I say this a lot to her, she is the template of the National Action Network and how they should deal with and assist people when they're in crisis because her and her team are just, they are class A. They're like a law firm, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to keep up, you know what I'm saying? So that's basically what we kind of sort of like do, you know, collaboratively together. And ever since we've, you know, we've we struck the relationship, it's been a smooth operation. I, I, I always seek her consultation. She seeks my consultation. And I think we call, I mean, every morning, every morning. <laughs> We on the phone every morning, seven seven thirty in the morning. So it's like our uh, get ready, get ready call for the day. Uh, collaborate, share information, seek counsel and direction. And I, th I think that how I, I, I can ex you know speak about our relationship and what we do. Well, gee, that was a mouthful, but I'm glad you brought that up, Brenda. You had um, alerted me to that. Um, what you all are doing. Is there anything else you want to share about that? Uh, CJC. I do, because um, this is what's important about civil rights organizations. Mm -hmm. What we find, and, you know, because I, as, as I stated before on, on, on the, um, you know, on the leader, on a leader's voice, um, I was with the NAACP for about probably 80% of my life. Um, starting at early, yeah, um, early age. I've been with the SCLC and now I'm with NAN. Um, what I uh, found and, and Brother Pate and I discussed is that you have all of these chapters within an organization, uh, but then they don't work together. That's a problem. Um, and so um, they, you, you, you know, they, it's great to tout the numbers it's great to tell the chapters. That's wonderful. But if the chapters uh, or the organization is not working in a way where, uh, it, let's say, for instance, uh, if if, uh, if there's a case in Georgia, which we got cases in Georgia, we got cases in Florida, we got cases in Alabama, where it, you know the the original um, call may come from Virginia, but the case itself is not in Virginia. So this is what the CJC do. So when we label it a CJC case, that means that um, Virginia is on the case and also the state that is in. It could be wherever in the United States uh, um, that is in. So that's why it's called a CJC because it's a criminal justice co collaborative. It is a or, or collective is what we call. And our hallmark is actively participating in criminal justice processes that involve serving victims, offenders, family, community, and or groups towards resolution of their asks. Resolutions of nonviolent to amend um, unusual, unusually call, unusually caused by a criminal justice system or harm caused by a crime. And it's, and, um, and it goes on and on of what our hallmark is. Mm -hmm. So, and then of course, our purpose is the criminal justice collective is to seek to advance, um, to advance toward goals of positive transformation by providing opportunities for support, open dialogue through the public forums and events, research and writing to bring a resolution for long-term change. Because if we don't bring about a change, and if we don't bring about a resolution, then we haven't done anything. So it's just about um, the, the National Action Network is doing something that I that that the other organizations don't do, and that is we work together among the other states. We pull the other states in; they are a part of the criminal justice collective. So just as Brother uh, Pate explained, if he need to consult with me on a matter in Virginia, then he collect, consults with our team. Our team consults with his team. If it's in Atlanta, California, wherever it is, we contact that chapter and we all work together in order to come to a resolution mm -hmm. for the victims and for the families. So, um, and that, that is not something that you're gonna find in any other organization. And I can say that because I've been in all the, the other organizations, mm -hmm. I've, been a, I've been a member of the order, other organizations. It's like a competition. Now, let me say this, let me be very clear um, because I'm, you know, I keep it real. 
Um, do you have chapters in NAND that, that, that would do the same thing and won't work with you? Absolutely. But we're not worrying That's about right. those. We're That's worrying right. about those that are willing to want to work together to resolve the issues of those that are, uh, that are, uh, uh, um, are seekers um, of a, uh, that are called crisis seekers. We are here to work to help those that are seeking help for their crisis. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. For. That's what we do. Now, do we have a lot of people that? Um, and 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 we we're, we're gonna have. I would love to have another show because there's been a lot of changes as far as how you go about getting that help and what that process looks like. So at another time, because we I know we're gonna be talking about voting, but on another time, we certainly want to come back and be able to. You really go by the step by step with people to be able to help them uh, understand what that looks like. Absolutely. Well, of course, it's your show. I'm just giving you the platform. You just tell me <laughs> what you want to talk about, and you got it, baby girl. Yeah. That that's, said, um, I, I that's know so I'm good. excited about a lot of things, but um, I, I, I want to go ahead and do this. You talk about working together. If you don't mind, can we bring Kush in just for a minute? Because it's important for them to understand that even though his plate is full as a criminal justice uh, lawyer, a civic, what is he? Civic, civil, 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 civil rights law in New York. He is working with you all in Virginia. Let's let's give him some kudos before we move on, Brenda, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. And let me tell you, um, Kush, That's right. <laughs> Kush shook a lot. Um, it is absolutely one of the greatest people uh, that I met, especially when it comes to an attorney. Um, they have the love and compassion that he has. And Kush, uh, when I, like I say, Kush, uh, uh, I came in to help Kush with uh, the Israel Jackson case. We're working on some other cases with Kush. And um, and like I say, um, you know, and, and, and I'm gonna let Kush talk about the success and with the Israel Jackson case, we are very excited. But I'll let Kush discuss that when he comes back on uh, at the third uh, Sunday of the month. So that's going to be some very exciting news of why it's important for us to go out and vote. And also why it's important for us to understand that our elected leaders, um, they work for us. Um, so but um, not only that, but I introduced Kush to our brother Pate. Kush have and brother Pate, uh, they they now uh, have a they, they their own communication. Kush have done a legal night for uh, the national um, and on Thursdays. They once a month they do a legal night, and he done that for the national. And he and, and brother Pate is and know that he can call Kush at any time and be able to talk to Kush and Kush assist him in any other way, in any way that he can. So we definitely got to give kudos to, to our brother Kush uh, Shukala, attorney Kush Shukala, and the absolute dynamite work that, um, that he do uh, within his firm. You know, I had to do that. And yes, she's absolutely right. Um, he comes on the third Sunday of every month 1 p.m. East Coast time on none other than Storm Talk 365's A Leader's Voice. Now, I'm excited about that lineup uh, because uh, when I first met him, it was just to do an interview with Brenda. But to have someone, if you Google him, his accolades are through the roof. And he's a young 30 year old and he's accomplished so much, but he's admired all throughout the legal community and to have him to be a part of NAN and especially working in the Virginia chapters that speaks volumes of what they're doing, not only in the local community, but all communities that come together, like they said, it doesn't matter. So um, Victor has Yes. I'm gonna put him back in the stream. So okay. Victor, uh, that's okay, it's, it's fine. So Victor, we have skirted around your history. I want people to know just a little bit about and what I call your experiences that exposed who you are, what you can do for the community and where you're going now. Nothing happens by accident and nothing is negative unless you deem it to be so. But it appears your experiences have given you a voice for those who have no desire to speak up or don't know how. So let's talk a bit, sure. a little bit about your experiences and then we move into the importance of voting. 
Curly, thank you very much once again, um, sister, uh, uh, for this platform. So um, I guess my my history started that put me on the path to doing advocacy work and actually where I found my. He got that knocked off. <laughs> it, it must be his Internet. It must be his Internet. Yeah. So he'll be back on. Uh, so we definitely want him to uh, be able to come on. I, I, I did want to mention I did see um, their, their brother go. Okay, sorry. Sorry about the, the technology. No, the okay. internet. That's fine. We're good. Yeah. So 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 basically like I say uh what I was gonna start to say <laughs> are normally, you know, not having an opportunity for their voice and they're suppressed and oppressed was behind the prison walls. Being a formerly incarcerated person, spent over fifteen years of my life in New York State prisons and jails. I've been in mostly every uh, maximum security prison in New York state. Um, and I guess that my transformation actually came from behind the wall and not that the correctional system had anything to do with that. First and foremost, I give, I give all praises due to God who allowed me to even go through what I went through and come out and be and become the person that I am today. So I guess when I was behind the wall, I seen a lot of injustices um, happened, not only to myself, but to others. I seen and was also a victim of abuse behind the walls that oftentimes happened to others. And I guess it kind of sort of like gave me a different perspective on life. And I got to kind of sort of like help me come to the decision of what I did not know, what I didn't want to be for the rest of my life. And what kind of sort of like had given me an opportunity to take a look at myself. So it was it was an opportunity to, to do the introspection that we often sometimes need. And I know that, you know, in God, in his divine wisdom, he sent me to a place that I would have to make a decision, you know, what I was going to do if I was able to come out there alive with the rest of my life. Well, when I finally got out, not... Okay. Um, I know he's going to come back on. I also want to mention, I did see, and I'm glad to, to know that the national chapter is watching. Uh, I did see Mr. Anthony Dosey come on. He is with the LGBT community, T community with the National Action Network. So uh, he, Anthony, did say good afternoon. So he is also on in national. So it is good to see that national is watching on the line. Uh, on for the show today. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had no clue. I got goosebumps. I'm being watched. Yeah, that was on. He is with National. So um and he's a he's a great guy with the LGBTQ community. So in New York. So that is absolutely fantastic. I was really glad to to hear that. Also while Victor is coming back on there you Am go. I back? No, no, no. no. Go, ahead. go ahead, Brenda. Finish your statement. We'd be right well, with yes. coming back. Right. I, I want to mention really quickly mm -hmm. when you hear me say that um, we, um, that we don't use the word um, inmates. Victor was the person that that uh, schooled me on that. <laughs> he was the one that said we don't use the word inmates, and it's a it's demeaning to have brothers and sisters behind the wall. He was the one that said to me, and you know when I thought about it, he was so right. So even when I'm talking to, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to, even the brothers that's on the inside. When I'm on the phone with them, and it was even yesterday, the brothers kept saying inmates, and I said, brother, we don't use that word. I said, even though you're on the inside, they are your brothers. They are your brothers. Oh, you can say in, in a incarcerated individual, but we do not use that word. I do not call you an inmate. As I said, when you're talking about your brothers, just say brothers. Brothers. <laughs> you know, I like That's that. Right. And then we're going to move on to Victor, but I like that. Right. One of the things I don't like is labels. Um, I don't, even though I've been in nursing for over 40 years, I don't like calling people disabled. They had different abilities. Mm -hmm. I don't like calling people homeless. They have limited resources. That's right. There are a lot mm -hmm. of things that I don't like labels for. But that being said, Victor, um, you were telling us that you had to have some introspect yeah. while yes, you I did. were put in that situation to be behind the walls. Let's finish the introspective, then I have another question for you. Yeah, so the introspective, you know, for me, you know what I'm saying, was I was put in a place that I had to, you know, think about, you know what I'm saying, what I wanted to do, 
once I got out. And fortunately, I happened to have a lot of older brothers that were kind of sort of like my mentors and some of these guys, they were never coming home. And I remember this one particular white guy, older guy, he must have been about 50 plus something years old. I must have been about mm, about maybe 19, 20 years old at the time. And this guy used to run the yard from the time we come out in the morning, which was like eight o'clock till the time we went in at night, which was about 8.30, nine o'clock or so for the end of the day. And this guy, I mean, you know, he had his own pace. It was not like he did a fat pace. And one day I was walking around the track, right? And he kind of sort of like pulled up to me and said, hey, man, he said, he said, walk with me, right? Walk with me a little bit. So I walked with him because that's about what his pace was like, almost like a walk, but he would try it all day and told it was time to go. And he asked me how old I am. And I told him, I said, I'm 19 years old. And he said, what you in here for? And I told him I was in there for, you know, armed robbery. And he looked at me and he said, do you know I'm never going home? And I said, no, I said, I didn't know that. He said, when I came in here, I looked like you. I was young. I had strength. Look at me now. He said, I've been in here. I think he had been in there 50 plus years. And he told me he was never going home. He said, do you want to be me? And I said, no. He said, well, you better not do what you've been doing, because if you do that, you're going to be me or either you're not going to get back here to be able to be me. That struck me. Not that I got it the first time, because it took me a many, many more, more time before I really got that message. But it kind of sort of like put me on that path to start thinking that, you know what, if I keep doing this here, I'm never going to make it out or I'm never going to have an opportunity to even make it there. All of that led to me making a decision eventually that, you know, my last time was my last time, which was 1995. And I have never seen the inside of a prison as a prisoner since that year. And I think that's what set me on the path to become an advocate because of what happened to me, what I've seen happen to others, and what I know happens and will continue to happen until we, the people, get involved to make this change. So I think that's what kind of sort of like allows me to do the work and the passion and the level to which I do it because I'm a directly impacted person. And I know that what's happened to me is still happening now. And until we actively engage in changes in this system, especially by those of us who have been directly impacted, including the families and including our community, because it is not just the person, it is the family and it is the community that is also affected through incarceration. And of course, without me even saying it, incarceration is an extension of slavery under a different name. And it continues to be perpetrated under the guise of correction and it doesn't correct anything. If anything, it destroys. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the work that I'm doing now. Praise the Lord. I love that. Um, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, Victor, I want to talk to you first before Brenda about the importance of voting rights of those who have been behind the walls and, and what do they sure. have to look forward to as a registered voter. Just hold on one second, please. Surely, okay. will do. Thank you much. You're welcome. You just saw a quick commercial. Uh, we're coming back to Victor Pay to talk about the importance of restoring voter rights for those who've been behind the walls. I am Ms. B, Positive Ms. B, CEO of Storm Talk 365 Radio, faith-based podcast network, where we help you to talk to the storms in your life. I'm also the CEO of Storm Radio 24-7, where we talk about arts, business, entertainment, and more. You just saw a short clip where I have now been given the opportunity to be the co-host on the Carrie Hines Hair Radio Show. Carrie Hines has been in business for over 25 years and he has his blog talk radio, which has been out there for five years. And I'm now the co-host. He comes on from six to 9 a.m. East Coast time, hailing out of New York. And the first hour is usually um, pre-recorded videos. I mean, recordings of artists such as 
um, you just name it. I'm just going to say he he has a lot of celebrities that he interviews. And the second hour is usually when you can hear me between seven and eight and maybe eight to nine. Between seven and eight, you can hear my commentaries on different things. So please join the Hair Radio Morning Show on Blog Talk Radio. Um, and if the last one was actually very interesting. He talked about the creator of Good Times, the Jeffersons, and, and the history behind those shows and what happened to the writers. So it's not just about hair. But that being said, thank you so much. Um, Victor, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, restoring voter rights to those who've been behind the walls. How's that going and how can you encourage those who have their rights restored to get out and vote? And thank you so much for that question. So uh, first I, I start with that um, now in New York State, as of 2018, people that are Well, all right then. <laughs> so, Brenda, I know you have something to say. Well, here he is. I usually like to wait at least thirty seconds, and he'll be back. Okay, just keep okay. talking. We got you. Oh, they 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 try. They can't stop me now. So, <laughs> I there you go. Do. I ain't gonna stop. So, no. like, so so as a 2018 in New York State, we were successful. We there was a campaign that I was a part of that was called Restore the Vote in New York. And it was basically focused on people that were in, currently incarcerated that was returning back to New York that were on parole, that they would have the right to vote. 2018 at the National Action Network annual convention, Governor Cuomo came to the convention and signed into law what's known in New York State as Executive Order 1. 81. 181 gave people that were returning to New York that were on parole a conditional pardon that would allow them to vote while they were on parole. Never before. That was step one. So with that particular executive order being put in place, everybody that was returning to parole, actually, I believe, just give him a minute. Just wait. give him a minute. Yeah. Okay. It's his internet. Thank you, Joanna, for stopping by. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Yeah, listen. Now, keep talking. Just keep talking. Don't even give him no credit. Just keep talking. 4,086 uh, people that were returning to the, uh, uh, to the city on parole were granted immediate conditional pardon. Now, this conditional pardon is only applicable to voting rights. So a lot of times people have it mistaken when you say you get a pardon. No, this is a conditional pardon that only relates to voting rights. So now you have people that are coming out on parole that has been in the community for at least 30 days on unrevoked parole where they have their voting rights restored. The only thing they have to do is go and register. What happened when this actually happened in 2018 and what did not go along with it was the actual education that should have went along with that to explain to people what this meant to them, but more importantly, what it meant for them to actually go and register and vote and how that it would affect their lives while they were in the community. So myself, along with a, a couple of other organizations, we undertook the process of educating, making sure that they had this information, making sure that the parole officers was informing them that they had the right to vote and making sure that they would actually be given these conditional pardons so that they could register to vote. So fast forward to why it's important to vote. More importantly, why it's even important for those that have previous criminal justice histories. Well, throughout time, memorial and historically, our vote has always been under attack. And you, it begs the question is, why are they always trying to suppress and oppress the vote? Well, guess what? Because that is the epitome of how the system is designed and changed and things that decisions that are made that affect your life is done through the political process. Why would you not want to have a decision and a role in decisions that will affect your life? Why would you not want to take part in the political process whereby your ancestors, we know the history, died, fought, and sacrifice for the right, for the vote, just for the right to vote. Never mind all the other stuff that we've been fighting for, for all of these 400 plus years. 
and upon whose shoulders we stand for the sacrifices that were made for us to even be able to do what we are doing right now. Why would you not want to be a part of that process? Well, it's so important that, you know, we, you know, collectively as a people, but I'm, I'm, I speak to my brothers and my sisters who were formerly incarcerated to tell them that the way for us to change the criminal justice system as it is, is to change the people who make the laws that affects the lives of people who may or fall in the clutches of the criminal justice system because the decision, the laws, the judges, the DAs, and everybody that's affiliated with the criminal justice system are voted in and or either appointed. And if you are not a part of that in it, then you're a part of the problem that you allow the same condition to continue to exist. If you're not a part of improvement and making a contribution to self and society, then you're a part of that very same problem that you yourself allow to continue to exist and you are accepting the conditions under which you and your family and your community have to suffer under because guess what? Politicians are voted in politicians can be voted out. These are the very same people that make the laws and policies that affect your life while you're in the community. And if you have the unfortunate, unfortunateness to fall into the system of the correctional system, it will govern what happens to you while you're there as well as what happens for you on your way out. So it's so important for us, those that have been directly impacted to become more active part of this process and have a voice and a say into what laws are made, what laws are passed in our communities. And you have to understand that each level of the political process is set upon one, the local, the state, and each level affects the next. So you have to not only be paying attention to the state and national politics, you have to also pay attention to the local politics, which affects your life and the things that happen for you in the community. So I say to all of those, like I say, you gotta get engaged, you gotta get involved, you gotta register, you gotta vote, you gotta have a voice in your life, in your, your future life, in your grandkids, and in the future that is coming behind us and in the next generation. And the way to start that is that you yourself have to be actively engaged in this process. Your voice and your vote does count. And just think, if you don't vote, you don't count. How do you like that? Mm, no, he didn't put that. Brenda, I know he said a lot, but one of the things I want you to address, uh, piggyback on is, how important is the vote locally? I know you're very involved in your local community and all of those who have voted positions and assigned positions. Let's talk a little bit about making sure they understand the local vote because some people just click, click, tag, tag, you know, and don't even care. Oh, well, they've been in office forever. I'm gonna let them stay there. Or they're on the ticket with this person. So I'm just gonna vote everybody Democrat. And, you know, let's talk about the importance of the local vote, Brenda, please. Well, it's, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's an excellent question because I think what people don't understand and don't realize is that um, all, all, all voting starts at, on the local level. All elections start on the local level. It, it starts from your school boards to your uh, city councils to your county um, supervisors. It starts on, on that local level. If you are not voting on that local level, and then you, because you have to always understand, people are, when once people start running in a position, they always want to then seek a higher position. Well, if they're not doing a good job for the community on whether or not they're in the school board, in a position on the school board or the city council, then they're not going to do a good job if, if they run for as a delegate or as a senator. Um, for the uh, uh, General Assembly. I'm gonna give you a perfect example because see, first of all, uh, and, and, then, and then it matters too, uh, who, who are our, um, who are, who are the, the Attorney General? Uh, because that Attorney General Office have so much power uh, and we have to always remember that because we had a lot of uh, elections that's coming up. Who are, um, who controls um, the Virginia 
uh, Senate. Who controls uh, the Virginia House? Right now, they are controlled by Democrats. And um, give you a perfect example because of the temperature of what has been going on uh, in the nation, in our nation today, in the United States today, the changes that has been made um, and the laws that was passed in the General Assembly, it would have not been done had the Democrats not been in control of the House and the Senate. Let's be very clear on that. So um, when you are voting, you, you one thing you better understand, you better understand that when, especially with our young people that's out here today, um, I hope that they understand that even when you vote, know what those bills are that you're voting. Um, and there is a bill right now that talks about gerrymandering. Um, it's it's it, um, number one, you vote no. I, honestly, anything that deals with gerrymandering does not does not help us. Okay, it just does not. It splits, and it's going to split going to um, to a party that is not in your best interest. Okay, so but I just want to I want people to understand a few bills that has already been passed uh, that are now passed that is going to benefit um, what has happened regarding George Floyd and and all the police killings and shootings and the lack of trust with police but but your senators because of the protest and i'm talking about the peaceful protest okay i'm not talking about um the rioting i'm talking about the peaceful protest where people was out there and they are standing and they're saying no i'm not going to take this anymore but they're not looting they're not tearing up people building but it made a difference when it came to um to the general assembly this year okay because they you was heard and you was heard because the those that are sitting there that normally are not doing anything and probably not even reading what the bills are or what they're going to do they didn't have a choice this time because they understood very well that they that they was going to either like like um like you said they like brother said they're going to either get voted in or they can get voted out and i think that they are getting more they're understanding that more now than they ever was. Now there are, are there are some people in there that I think that need to be voted out. Absolutely, but right now we still got to understand what's important. Now we got a bill, and I want I want people to understand this. I will be sending this out to our chapter, uh, to our chapter members, and um, for those that don't have it, because I think this is very important for people to understand. Because we do have a legislative liaison. Her name is Lily Branch Kennedy. Now, most people are going to recognize that name because she's known as the fishback lady. Lily Branch Kennedy have wrote two bills and got them passed. So we will be doing a webinar and with Lily Branch will be teaching us how to write a bill and how to kill a bill. So this is what's important when it comes to our chapters and what it is that we're doing. But Miss Lily Branch was gracious enough to send me over um, what has been passed in the house that's going to be very benef beneficial and that deals with what's going on. House Bill uh, 5099 that was sponsored. Um, uh, it it's, um, prohibits law enforcement to uh, police officers from seeking or executing a no-knock warrant. That has been passed. House Bill 5049 um, it's sponsored by Delica Helmer. It reduces the militarization of police by prohibiting law enforcement from obtaining or using uh, spe specified equipment, including grenades, weaponized aircraft, and high caliber firearms. Um, we got another one, House Bill 5109, sponsored by Delegate Hope, creates statewide uh, minimum training standards for law enforcement officers, including training on awareness of racism and potential uh, uh, potential for bias profiling and de-escalation techniques. So, and we can go on and on, but these are some of the bills that's been passed. Why? Because they listen. Okay. Why? Because we got a house in a Senate in, in the Virginia assembly that are both Democrats. Now, if that changes, you best better believe that's going to change as well because, um, uh, and, and I guess say, we're not talking about, I know for me personally, when and, and people want to um, twist this in any way that they can, when it comes about defunding the police, we're not talking about taking anything from the police. We're talking about making sure that you got psychiatrists, 
counselors, um, um, therapists, whatever you can bring in. Um, and, and me personally, I think the missed opportunity are brothers like Brother Willie, ex Brown, Brother Joe, Kenton Bay, Brother, um, uh, uh, my brother right here, <laughs> Chaplain Victor Page. These are the brothers that can go into, that, that need to be with the police officers in some of the areas in which they are certainly not, they are certainly not trusted and be able to sit down at, to the table with them and explain to them why they are not being trusted. Why you can't go into their community and have the respect. See, that's the missed opportunity that I think that the city makes. The mayors, um, they, they got the opportunity to bring them in and have a task force and say, this is gonna be another task force that we're gonna add on with, with, with uh, um, just like with our brothers that come out, uh, at, you know, our return citizens that come out and they're working and they, they, they got their uh, restorative rights to vote and they, can, they, they know what, the, what it's like with our young people and they can talk to their young people. That's where the missed opportunity for me. There's a lot of more work that can be done in order to help a lot of communities start trusting again, but it's gonna take a while. But when it comes to our voting, and let me let me remind people, because a lot of times people don't vote until the presidential election. I wanna remind people every year, Virginia has an election season. You need to be voting every year in Virginia because it can change all the time. And, you, and, and not only that, but people that, and this is another reason, I know I'm kind of going on, but another reason, when people are seeking Christ's help, this is what we find because one of, one of the steps in Christ's seeking is, do you know your local legislators? And I can guarantee you, most people don't. They don't know who they are because they don't care. They don't get involved. I can't tell you how many people call me and ask me, who do I vote for? Because I know you know. That's what they do. They call me up. Brenda, who do I vote for? Who is that? Because I don't know who they are. But see, that's the problem. All you do is Google that person. Read about them. These are people, these are uh, intelligent people. These are not people that can't read. These are people that can't read. And but because, but when it's time when they are looking for help, they don't understand that it's still my duty because it's a part of the structure for NAN is to ask you, have you been involved with your local, state and national leaders? And then they don't know who they are. But this is how this is why we don't just just tell them who they are and not let them do the work. No, you still got to do the work because we're going to teach you how to become an advocate for yourself because you haven't been involved. So, you know, that's my, that's my next question. Have you been involved in any kind of community organizations or activities? Um, no, no, I, I never thought that this would happen. Well, none of us do. None of us think anything would happen, but the point is, you know, um, I believe Joe Madison said this one morning. I love Uncle, uh, Uncle Joe. I think Joe Madison said this one morning. If you can, if you Google yourself and you ain't got nothing there to show for what you've done in life, think about it. You ain't got nothing there that you could, you, you can, you can Google yourself now. It could, anything. You can find anything about yourself if you want to. Internet is, is powerful. But if you, if you can find, if you haven't done anything and you haven't helped anybody, but then as soon as something happened in your family, you at, you're making demands about what it is that you want. It just doesn't work that way because we have to explain to people all the time. No, you got to do the work. We're going to be here to assist, but you got to do the work. But see, all that goes right back to voting. All that goes right back to voting. Now, I want to remind everybody next year we have a, we have attorney general that's running for office. OK, Mark, I don't know if Mark Herring is throwing his hat back into the ring or not because he haven't declared that he's going to run for a third term. OK, but we also got a Jay Jones, Delegate Jay Jones of the Norfolk that's running for that position. And then we got a number of people that's running for governor. 
So, and so we got a governorship, we got that, we got, there's a lot of uh, positions, but you got to start knowing your local leaders. You got to start knowing who's going to be working in your best interest. You got to know who do you want in that team in the Virginia General Assembly in order to continue to look out for your best interest. Because if you don't, then don't complain about it. And if you don't, when you when you seek help and you can't get it the way you want to get it, or you don't know, and, and people we get people all the time, well, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, I understand. We're gonna help you, we're gonna help you know. So it's just so important to vote. We early voting, early voting ended on, on Saturday, on yesterday here in Virginia. You got over 75 million people that have already voted. Uh, me personally, I'm all I'm one of these people. I love going to the polls on the day of election. So I'm I, I just one of those people. And it, it's not that that is not that I couldn't have voted early. I'm just one of those people. So, uh, and, but but still, um, the importance is the, the importance. I want to. I can't stress enough that let people know voting starts on a lo on the local level. It starts on the local level, and you have to vote in every election. Every time we have an election, the lines that we see is the same lines that we need to see every time. All right. it, because right now, our life depends on this election. It literally depends on our life. All right. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. People don't know. And, and, um, and, and, you know, Ms. B, of course, you know I work in a tax office. Now I run a tax office. And people keep talking about, you know, that tax, they what they what they get lowered on that taxes. I wish, I wish that people understood what the tax codes mean and what has been done and how people have been affected by that tax scam. Oh that tax wow. Scam that we've been in for the past four years. That's a whole nother show, brother. That's a whole nother, show. That's a whole nother show, brother. As the year gets in, we will discuss that. So all people right. can understand um, where we are. But all of this is about voting. Yeah, it is. It is. Voting. But like you said, voting comes every year and it never ends and they need to be aware. So, um, Victor, we have about eight minutes left, seven minutes left. Is there anything you want to add? I had a few questions for Brenda, but I'm going to give you the platform uh, before we end. So Victor, is there anything you want to add about yeah. voting as far as the importance of the black vote? Sure. Yeah. So thank you very much. And like I say, thank you once again, Sister Brenda. Thank you, Sister Bonita, for your platform and for you continuing to do the work that you do. Um, and, I, and I'd like to say, you know, as Brenda said, like, you know, um, and, you know, applicable to, you know, us here in New York, actually today is our last day of early voting up until four o'clock. There's another three hours. Yeah. Four o'clock. There's uh, up until four o'clock. still early voting that, you know, it is just so, so very important, you know, for us to be engaged and involved in, you know, the decisions that are made on our lives. Um, and I, I can tell you one of the things, and especially as a result of voting, what what I've seen personally, and why I tell you that it does work, uh, with regards to our uh, New York State Parole Board, which is usually made up of law enforcement people, but just because of the fact that there were some advocates in the arena that were taking a look at the makeup of our parole board and who they did not have on it and why so many people were getting long sentences and why people were going to the parole board consistently getting hit after after being incarcerated for decades. We were successful in getting two of our candidates from amongst our ranks appointed to the parole board that they now sit on as parole commissioners. And as a result of their appointment to the parole board, there have been more people released in the last two years than I can remember in the last 20 years by the parole commissioners. That happened as a result of advocacy work, engagement in politics, and voting. And that most of us that were part of this particular campaign was specifically aimed at getting new parole board commissioners appointed 
we were successful in our campaign. And had we not been engaged, involved in voting in the arena, we would never have been successful in replacing these parole Important to be, to engage and involve our ancestors. You know, fought for this right, died for this right, sacrificed so much. And how dare you not take advantage of this opportunity to vote for what people have sacrificed for you to be able to do what you do right now. So with that, I think that would be it for me. And I thank you once again for this platform and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for your support. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. Brenda, if you would take time to go through the comments section and answer the couple of questions directed at you um, at the end of the broadcast, I'd appreciate it. But again, Victor Pate is out of New York. Brenda Coles is out of the Richmond, Virginia. And no, I'm not gonna do a shameless plug for that man's book. Who is that man? <laughs> what he got to do with this? I don't know. Okay, Brenda, right. you got one minute to talk about his book. One minute, Brenda. One minute. One minute. I <laughs> Go ahead, Brenda. Know. Go uh, ahead. Start this book. You can get it autographed. We'll get Brother Pate to get it autographed for you. And oh, you're you gonna put me in it too, huh? <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna put you in it. If you okay. want to get you know, autograph my copy, rise up, uh, confront a country at the crossroads. We want to get Devin Sharpton's book. So if you do want to, you want to get one, uh, just send me an email at richmondva.nan at comcast.net, and then we're gonna work on trying to get Devin Sharpton on the show. Yes, okay, there are two things y'all need to know. Um, I don't do a lot of typing. I like to listen. So if you could put that information in the comment section, Brenda, or how they can get the book, that would be a blessing. And Victor says, why you want to put him all up in your mess? <laughs> <laughs> well, she know that's how we work, though. Listen, don't, <laughs> I got her. Don't you well, sugar do a say you need and I'm there. Well, that'll be an yeah. honor if we could have um, the man himself, the founder of NAN, to be a part of A Leader's Voice. Uh, if the two of you can work that out, you can see the old girl grinning already. We're going to work uh, on it. We're going to work, gonna work on, on that, for sure. All right. From both well, ends. Uh, just know I appreciate the thought anyway. But that being said, everybody, you can find Brenda Coles on her fan book, Facebook page at the Brenda Coles. Victor Pate, uh, do you have any contact information you want to share with the listeners and viewers? Sure, sure. Actually, it's easy to get me. If you went on to my campaign website, it is www. N as in Nancy, Y as in you, C as in can, A as in apple, I as in N, C as in can, dot org. That is the website for my campaign and the work that we do um, in New York State with criminal justice and criminal justice reform. Okay, just say it real quick. Don't spell it. Just say it. Okay. www. Oh, I'm sorry. You said don't say it. <laughs> NewYorkCake.org. All right. There you have it. And he's going to type that in the comment section under the video as well. Because, again, I do more listening than I do typing. But it is right around 59 minutes in. I thank you both so much. Brenda Coles, Victor Pate, they're telling you to go out and vote. Um, Jennifer Rice says, y'all are a great team. And she thanks mm -hmm. uh, us for the advocacy that you all are doing. So that being said, everybody, this is Ms. B, Positively Ms. B. Please join me right back here every first Sunday of the month with my sister, my friend, my pal, <laughs> Brenda Coles on A Leader's <laughs> Voice. And she has so many interesting guests and topics, and not just by voting, but she's passionate about helping all communities, not just her local community. And the same thing with Victor Pate, even though he hails from New York, he's interested in anything that concerns you that needs to be addressed as far as any injustices, whether it's behind the walls, after you leave the walls, or to keep you from getting behind the walls. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for all your comments, Joanna, and everybody else. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Be blessed. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem.